Hi, this is Simon Obstel, and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. Now, Fusion has some great tools for depth compositing, but they don't always give you the flexibility that you need. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at building a couple of custom depth tools that I think you'll be able to find a lot of creative uses for. So let's get started. So for the purposes of this tutorial, I've created this composition, which I'll give you a link to. And you'll notice that I've got two separate renderers. The first is rendering this grid of spheres, and the other one is rendering this single large sphere. Now you'll notice that both of these renderers have got their output channels Z enabled, and that's important for us to be able to use their Z information. By default, this is not enabled, so you need to turn that on. So the first thing I want to look at is depth merge. And indeed, in Fusion, we can very simply create a depth merge. So let's just merge the large sphere over the other spheres. So the large sphere renderer over the top of the sphere grid. But if we come over to channels and we turn on enable depth merge, you'll notice that the sphere is now sitting inside the depth of the multiple spheres. And if we come over to its transform and we adjust its Z position, or indeed any of its other positions, you'll see that it's sitting there tr in true Z depth. So let's I just talk very quickly about Z depth. So let's look at the, the sphere grid here, and let's come to channel, and let's look at Z depth. And we don't see anything, and that's because these Z values are mapped across a very large range. We can visualize them, but if we come to options and normalized color range, and then you can see uh, it's normalized so we can actually start to see something in that Z channel. So let's just turn that off and let's now consider how we would make our own depth merge. Just gonna switch back to color, that's why we were seeing nothing there. So I'm gonna keep that merge and I'm just gonna turn off the enable depth merge for it. And then I'm going to create a custom tool. And this is where it's all going to happen. So I'm going to come over to channels. And what I'm going to target is the alpha channel. And I'm going to type the following expression. If open brackets Z1 is greater than Z2, comma, 1, comma, 0, close brackets. And that's just basically comparing the two input Z channels and either returning one for the alpha or zero. So let's first of all patch this up. So let's patch that into there and this into here. And then let's look at the custom tool and see the result by monitoring that new alpha channel. And everything that's white is in front of everything that's black. But what we can actually now do is use this custom tool as the effect mask for the merge. So let's do that. Let's come back to the merge and look at the color. And this is round the wrong way. So we actually need to just swap the inputs to that custom tool. So that's control T. And now you'll notice we're back to the state that we were. And you can see that the sphere is sort of sitting in Z depth in relation to that merge. So we've exactly replicated what's happening here with the enable depth merge. You'll notice that there's this option here of a foreground Z offset, and we can actually make that as well. What we need to do is come back to our custom tool, and after the Z1 here, we need to type plus N1. And now, if we come to our controls, N1 is now that Z offset. So if we adjust N1, you'll see that we can push it backwards or forwards, and that's exactly the same as this Z offset control on the depth merge. So you might be asking why that's useful. So let's answer that. I'm just gonna disable this and I'm gonna come back to the fusion depth merge and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. And you'll notice that it's a little bit grungy around the edges. And that's because the process creates an alpha channel that's either black or white with no gray in between. And the advantage of using our custom method so let's re-enable that and disable that. So you see we have the same issue, but obviously what we can do here 
is we can apply a blur after our custom tool and that softens off some of that grunge. So that's an immediate advantage. But another thing we could do, let's just disable that because I don't want that. And I'm going to re-enable that custom tool into there. I'm going to keep that blur after it. And I'm going to turn this blur up to say something like 10. And after that, I'm going to add a brightness contrast. We want to turn off RGB and turn on A. And it's important to clip the black and the white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the low value to 0.25 and the high to 0.26. And then I'm going to copy that brightness contrast, paste, take the blur into the new brightness contrast. And I'm just going to reset these values. So the high is going to be 0.75 and that low, let's go for 0.74. And now we can subtract these two from each other. So let's add a new custom tool. Let's pipe them into that. So remember that we're working with the alpha channel. So let's come down to the alpha channel, A1 minus A2. And I think we just need to swap that around to see what we want. So there you go, Control T to swap those inputs around. And now we've got an edge that's based on the Z depth. So then we can take our merge and we can add, for example, a color corrector to it. Let's look at that and take our new custom tool and use it as the effect mask input for that color corrector. So effect mask input. And now if we come to the color corrector, we can, for example, increase the gain like that. And we've actually got a sort of a depth color correction effect. So I've just tidied all of this up because I know I'll get some angry comments if I don't. So now what we can do is we can add a glow after that color corrector. And if we look at that, it doesn't actually look good at all because all the small red spheres are glowing and we don't really want that. But what we can do is to take our newly created mask and limit the effect of that glow. So let's do that. Add that as an effect mask to the glow. And that's already much better. So if we want to extend the area being glowed, we can come down to this blur here and let's increase that amount to say 20. And then what we can do is come into these brightness contrasts and just adjust their values. So this one I'm going to increase up to there and this one here let's reduce that low value and then you can see we've got a nice spread of that glow and then we can come back to our color corrector and we can introduce some nice yellow glow like this and what we can also do is we can come back to the renderer for the sphere and we can turn off its lighting and what that will do is it will make it self-illuminated. So it actually looks like a light source and you can see how much better that already looks. And look how nicely that glow is wrapping around those other spheres. So let's just compare what this would look like if we disabled this effect mask for the color corrector and for the glow. And you can see it's just, it doesn't work at all. So let's just re-enable that. It shows you how useful this technique has already been. And to finish it off, what we could do is we could add a light that tracks with the large sphere and we could add it to this merge here. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back when I've finished. So here we are. I've added this point light to this merge here for the sphere grid, which I want to be illuminated. I've made it slightly yellow. I've given it a linear decay. And what I've done is I've linked its transform to the large sphere. So now if I move the large sphere, you can see how nicely this is all working and how these small spheres get sucked into that glow of the large sphere. So being able to access that Z information and create our own masks out of it and so on, it, it allows us to do things that we really couldn't achieve with the built-in tools. So that's one reason why it's it's worth kind of understanding this as well as it's being kind of intrinsically interesting. So that is depth merge. Let's now look at a different option. I'm going to come back to our original composition, the one that I gave you a link to, and we're going to look at something that I'm going to call depth fade. So I'm going to do this with a new custom tool, Add that in here. So I, I'm just going to be focusing on this grid of spheres for this one. So I'm going to pipe that renderer out into our 
custom tool. And again, I'm going to be using the alpha channel and using an expression. So the expression is open brackets Z1 minus N1 close brackets divided by open brackets N2 minus N1 close brackets. And so what we're doing with this is we're remapping the Z values to the 0 to 1 range. So if you remember, the Z values were very considerable. If you look down at the bottom here, while I'm hovering over the, the frame, you, can, you should be able to see the Z values on the right-hand side of that bottom bar. And you can see, for example, that this sphere here is at negative 10, roughly speaking, whereas a sphere right at the back is somewhere like negative 45. So we're, we're going to remap these values using the sliders that we've assigned here. So let's actually look at this. Let's look at the alpha channel. And let's just remember those numbers. So the number one value is the far value. So let's set that to something like negative 40. And let's set the number two value to something like negative 10. And so now we've got a value of pretty much one here for the alpha for this sphere. And right at the back here, it, the alpha is going off to almost nothing. So we can use this again as an effect mask. And just initially, I'm just going to add a color corrector, pipe the renderer into the color corrector. Let's look at the color corrector output and then use our new custom tool as the effect mask input for the color corrector. So then if we adjust the color corrector, you'll see that I'm correcting the foreground spheres, but not the ones in the back, which are staying red. So we can adjust that using our controls here. So if we wanted to adjust that far value, so to say negative 30, you can see that more of the spheres are staying red, negative 20 even more. So this is really, really useful. We've got a graduated color corrector and it doesn't just have to be a color corrector, it could be anything. A couple of years ago, I made a tutorial in which I used this technique to create a depth blur that I would contend is a lot better than the depth blur that is built into Fusion. So this, this mask here is a really powerful tool. I'm just gonna very quickly come back to this custom tool because it's a little bit confusing to look at and I'll race through this. I'll come into the config tab, the number controls. I'm going to turn off all the number controls apart from the first two and I'm going to call the first one far and the second one near and I should probably also just turn off those point controls so they're not interfering with us either. So that's looking a lot neater. One other thing I want to point out is that if we come into the color corrector and settings obviously we are using the alpha channel as the mask input. If we wanted, we could swap the mask like that by just inverting it. And we can also use the low and the high controls to compress the range. So if I do that, if I bring these closer together, you can see I kind of get a much sharper cutoff between the values that I've remapped. We could build this into our custom tool, but since it's already there in these settings, I don't really see much point to that. So another thing we can do with this is to create depth fog. So I'm just going to add a background node and I'm going to set this to a sort of mid gray like that, sort of foggy gray. And let's just remove that color corrector. I'm not interested in that for the time being. Let's merge our renderer over the top of the background like so. Let's look at that merge. Again, let's use our custom tool and feed that into the effect mask input of the merge. And now we've got a fog effect. So if I come to my camera and we swivel around on Y, you can see that fog effect in action. And this is really exactly the same as the depth fog node that you've got built into Fusion. And we can use our near far controls to adjust how that fog is working. So we could make it fog even further 
Let's uh, even set that near value to sort of zero and we're really deep in the fog there and that looks quite nice. And we could even just, for example, add a fast noise over the top of our background. And if we let's increase the contrast of that. And you can see we can have sort of texture to our fog if we wanted and we could get it to seethe as well. So you know, there's lots of, of options there. And if we wanted, we could take our renderer and again, drop in a color corrector and before that merge there and we could completely desaturate it. And then we could use our custom tool again as an effect mask for the color corrector so that we're desaturating the distance a little bit more than the foreground. And that, that looks a little bit more realistic as well. So there's, there's a lot you can do here that uh, will actually take it far beyond anything you can do with the depth fog, because as I say, you can use this custom tool to your own advantage and build uh, some really kind of complex effects with it. And in the link, I'll also give you some pre-built macros for both of these effects. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. I hope you'll find some interesting uses for it. So thanks for watching. See you again soon.